Let me tell y'all a little story, man. I bought this machine back in 2000. About 2000. Got it at the pawn shop in Denver. Paid around $300 for it. I first, my first time checking it out was around 1996. It was around $1,000 back then. And so I finally got a chance to got it. And through all these years, I used to, I practiced it. I studied the manual. I think I still got the manual. I still got the manual here. But I um, studied the manual through and through. I used to uh, mix records. I would have a mixer hooked up to it, have the mixer hooked up to this right here, and then I would play the records, uh, mix the records, and mix the uh, mix the drum machine in, because that's what I got it for in the first place, because I was doing a lot of DJing. I still was DJing. And so, throughout all these years, now it's old. It's old school. You buy something from a long time ago, and... 15 years later, you still got it. Now it's considered old school, but I will say that after working with it for all these years, I get a chance to learn how to work it. Um, now, a lot of the buttons, let me tell you something. The buttons is even broke. The buttons is broke. Some of the, some of the features don't even work, right? Sometimes you have to bypass that. Some of the good features about the uh, MC303 is that it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight ports where you can send MIDI out on each channel. The rhythm part, part one, part two, part three, part four, part five, all the way down. And you can send those sounds out. If you have another sequencer, you can send those channels off to another, you can send those MIDI out channels to another machine. That's how I did a lot of the uh, the music that you hear me playing. Hold on a second, let me see something. See what I'm saying? But anyway, um, some of the good things that I did like about this Roland MC303, even to this day, is that I still got my uh, my knobs, uh, my cutoff, and you know I have worked with some digital audio workstations. Matter of fact, I still got one upstairs. I just don't really use it a lot. Kind of stuck in the old school a little bit, you know. But you know when they say something about bad reviews about it, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not all that, but if you know how to use it, just use it to the best of your ability. That's all I do. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you something. See this 505 here? Man, I got this 505 at the uh, pawn shop. It's raggedy as hell. But I told the lady, I said, give me $50 for it. Because let me tell you something. The buttons, the buttons is broke. I can't even get no sound out the back. But had to run it through MIDI. You hear that? Let me turn it up. Even though this was raggedy as hell. I, the screen is even broke. The screen is broke. I can't see a thing on it. I wish I could. I don't know whether or not y'all can see that, man. It's broke. I can't see nothing. But I got kind of used to how uh, Mr. Rowland role and design some of this equipment. This 303 and this 505, he made the MIDI. 
all I did was this. I can't see a thing. I just ran the MIDI out to my other, um, to my Lisa's QX6, like, I just ran the output of this over to my uh, at least it's QX6. It's on channel two and channel three is being broadcast on this Roland MC505. So I just sent the output of the Roland MC505 to this to this one right here to my Lisa's QX6. Now I got this on what's called mix mode. That's when it will take, it will layer out sounds. It will layer out 16. You can run 16 mini ends to this right here and change every last one. This QX6 is real deep. It's real deep. I've had it for years. I didn't even buy that. I didn't even buy this. Somebody gave it to me. You know what I'm saying? I just put it in with the collection. My, my, my pitch wheel, it don't even work. The expansion slots on it, it don't even work. But what I try to do is use it the best as I can. Run it through some reverb, run it through some flanger, um, layer it up with, with some other instruments. So, here, let me go ahead and mess around with it a little bit more. I don't normally talk to y'all and I like that face to face. I'll be kind of busy to everybody who be saying what's up. I appreciate y'all. I didn't check all of y'all out. Makes a brother feel good now. But, uh, check this out. Y'all see this? This right here. This is a rolling, rolling D10. Nah, I take that back. A rolling D20. It's old school. It's old school. But once again, if you you got to work with what you got. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's all about. 